Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will discuss phase feeding and the impact of gestation and lactation on building feeding programs. We can look at the phase feeding concept breaking into six distinctive time periods. Let's go through each one and describe what's going on. The first one is the far off dry cow. This is 60 days prior to calving to about 21 days prior to calving, also referred to as prepartum. Obviously, there is no milk at this stage of the game, and generally these cows will be maintaining body weight or having a slight gain if they're on the thin side. The second phase, called the close-up dry cow. This is the last 21 days before calving. Again, no milk is actually being harvested, although colostrum is now being synthesized in the mammary gland. Basically, we'll see some decrease in body weight change because in the last five days, these cows eat significantly less feed and the rat calf is rapidly growing, plus we are making colostrum milk. Third phase, fresh cows. These would be cows that are fresh for 3 to 14 to 21 days. Farmers will vary the fresh cow time period depending on the health of the cow and her appetite, thus the wide range in days. These cows will be producing typically 40 to 50 pounds of milk, although some cows will come out of the box very quickly, producing 70 to 90 pounds of milk. These cows generally will lose less than 2 pounds per cow per day. More about that a bit later. Phase 4, early lactation cows. These cows will now have been milking 21 to perhaps 100 days. Milk production can average 95 pounds per cow, but of course varies greatly depending on the breed of the cow and the level of production in the herd. In this early phase, these cows are losing probably about one pound per day. It's important cows don't lose too much body weight or it'll affect reproductive performance. Phase 5, mid-lactation cows. These cows are milking then from 100 to 250 days after calving. Milk production is tailing off because the cow is pregnant at this point and cows are dropping on a rather definite amount. And now these cows should be gaining a pound a day to replace that body weight loss in early lactation. Phase 6, the tail enders. These cows are the last 100 days prior to drying off. In high producing herds, these cows don't exist. They're still trying to catch up. So in some herds, we will only have five phases. Milk production is modestly low at 40 to 50 to 60 pounds. And again, the cow continues to gain weight because now she can eat more than what she is producing. This diagram very neatly illustrates many of these same concepts. Across the bottom, months in calving, starting out day zero or month zero at calving, and at 12, the last month just prior to calving. Now you can see, superimposed on that, the various phases. Phase one starts out at 10 months, because that actually initiates the next lactation. In other words, if a cow has a poor phase one, we will have poor performance in the next lactation. Phase two, then coming over to the left side, is phase three, followed by phase four, peak milk, Phase 5, peak dry matter, phase 6, tail end. Now the unique thing on this slide shows you three critical curves that we must understand and manage for proper performance and health and reproduction. Let's start with the white curve. This is the milk lactation curve. Notice it has a fairly dome shape to it. Cows will peak, as you can see, somewhere around 40 to 50 to 60 days after calving and drop off rather gradually, 6 to 9%. This would be a normal lactation curve. If your cows drop quicker than this or don't peak at the right point, something is wrong in the six phases. The second curve, the yellow curve, is the dry matter intake curve. Again, you can see that it also peaks, but it peaks after milk production. So anything we can do to get that yellow curve to shift to the left and peak higher will help meet the nutrient requirement for the higher levels of milk production. Such things as total mixed ration, few metabolic disorders will shift this curve to the left. Anything the farmer can do to increase this peak dry matter intake curve should improve performance and minimize weight loss. Again, you can see these curves will cross over, and so when the yellow curve is above the white curve, these cows should be in positive energy balance and start gaining body weight they lost in early lactation. Which brings us to our third curve, the red curve, or the body weight loss curve. Notice how steep this curve is. This cow rapidly loses body weight. In fact, if we tried to draw it very, very accurately, it would be very steep in the first 
part of phase three and early parts of phase four. But you can see this curve drops down at some point will level off. Notice it levels off at the same point where the yellow curve passes the white curve, which means these cows are now eating more than what they're producing. And so now these cows will start gaining body weight back. And certainly we'd like to have a very smooth curve on this red curve so that when she is ready to calve back at the 12th month, her body condition or weight loss has all been replaced and the cow is ready for the next lactation. Therefore, in a phase feeding concept, you and I will build rations to make these three curves operate correctly. Therefore, we will have distinctly six different rations on most dairy farms. Let's go back and say a few words about each of these curves. The first curve, the white curve, was the milk curve. Generally speaking, you can take the amount of peak milk a cow achieves and multiply it by 200. This is called the 200 rule, which means if a cow peaks at 100 pounds of milk, multiplied by 200, she should produce generally 20,000 pounds of milk in the lactation curve. If you go to pasture-based cattle, this thumb rule is quite a bit lower because they do not hold milk production as well. The second one is called persistency. That is the ability to maintain the milk production. Persistency for first lactation animals, also called heifers, is about 6% a month drop after they hit their peak. So if a heifer reached 60 pounds of milk at her peak, 30 days later she would drop 6% or about 3.5 pounds of milk if it is a normal drop. Older cows drop faster. They will drop 9% a month. So if a cow was giving 80 pounds of milk a month ago, then this month we'd expect her to drop 9% or about 7 pounds of milk to stay on the curb. We can also have milk fat test and milk protein curves. We'll discuss that at another time. Let's take a quick look at the dry matter intake curve. Here are some neat guidelines. Dry matter intakes begins to drop about 5 days prior to calving due to hormonal changes and the cow getting ready to have a calf. This dry matter can drop as much as 10 to 30 percent depending on the individual cow and her diet. Another important thumb rule on dry matter intake. For each one pound of dry matter a cow will consume, we can expect an additional two pounds of milk if she's a Jersey or Guernsey or about two and a half pounds more milk if she's a Holstein or Brown Swiss. This difference due to its content of fat and protein. Thus, higher dry matter intakes will support higher levels of milk production. How much dry matter will a cow eat? Formula number three, or point number three, is pretty handy. Dry matter intake can be estimated based on the body weight of the cow, multiplied by 1.8%, plus add to that the amount of pounds of 4% fat corrected milk, multiplied by 0.3. The fourth equation will tell you how to calculate 4% fat corrected milk. 4% fat corrected milk is calculated by taking the actual pounds of milk times 0.4 and add to that the pounds of fat multiplied by 15. Remember, this is not fat test, this is pounds of fat. The fifth equation will tell you how to calculate pounds of fat. You simply take the pounds of milk a cow produces multiplied by its fat content. For example, a cow giving 100 pounds of milk with a 3% milk fat would be 3 pounds you then would take that back in the previous equation and multiply 3 pounds of fat times 15 and add to that 0.4 times 100, which would be 40. And there is your pounds of 4% fat corrected milk, which you then could walk back up to the next equation and calculate dry matter intake. These are primarily dairy NRC driven. In our final visual, let's talk a little bit about weight loss curves. Here are things to remember. The maximum weight loss occurs in the first three weeks. This can also imprint or affect the follicles that are developing, which may impact fertility in the cow. The maximum weight loss should be about 200 pounds for a large Holstein or Brown Swiss cow. Ideally, it should be zero because cows are more efficient taking nutrients from the diet and producing milk directly. But most high producing cows have to borrow some energy from the bank, in this case, their own body. Cows should calve at a body condition score about three and a half and then drop down to two to two and a quarter. This should be their lowest number. This will represent about a 200 pound weight loss and this loss should occur gradually over the first two months, not in a very short period of time. The Cornell people, bullet point four, indicate one body condition score is equal to about 125 pounds. Therefore, cows should not drop more than one and a half body condition scores. 
Now to replace body condition, one pound of body condition weight is equal to about seven pounds of milk. So now you can see how much milk we can borrow from the bank. In this case, nearly 1,400 pounds of milk if it is metabolically handled correctly. Or this is equal to about three pounds of shell corn, which again illustrates how much energy it takes to replace body weight loss. Well, hopefully this module has helped us understanding how cows go through various phases, how many feeding programs we need, and why it's important to manipulate the milk curve, the dry matter weight, the dry matter curve, and the weight loss curve. Thanks, and have a good day.